Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Whenever I hear the news that I'm to be the Ash Wednesday preacher, the first thing I do is hurriedly try to discover what the lessons will be, because I know about the ashes. I just don't know whether this will be the lesson or that. But it's almost always paired with this lesson. I have a long-standing memory of a stand-up comedian of some years ago by the name of Flip Wilson. Maybe you'll remember Flip Wilson. I don't remember much about him except somewhere in his gig always came six words. The devil made me do it. And audiences just were uproarious in their laughter. You're nodding. Yes, you remember that. Well, something like that happens to me on Ash Wednesday. Because I know what the lessons will be likely. I know what the ashes are going to be likely. And the devil gets into my waggish mind and I begin to think it's Cyclops Wednesday all over again. We're all marked with a third eye in the middle of our forage. Or perhaps a Martian in the 21st century. The devil makes me do it. I think it's actually a rebellion thing. Of all the lessons the church could choose, why does it choose this one? Because let me just read to you just a part of today's gospel lesson. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others but by your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. But here we sit looking a little like a 21st century Martian or maybe a mythological cyclops with this third spot on our head. By the way, according to Greek mythology, they had eye sockets but no eyes. So there it is. And, you, and here we sit. And sort of in contradiction to the very Sermon on the Mount. And I think to myself, why do we do that? But this is not the mark of a Cyclops or a Martian. It's the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And those, that cross was placed on your forehead and mine this morning with some rather sobering words. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. For those of us who choose not to take seriously the gifts that God gives us, Dust is the answer. It's what's going to happen, whether we can conceive of that or not. But at our baptism, and that's what this is about, the church spoke these words or something like them. With every hymnal, it seems to change a little bit. But the words were, you have been marked with the Holy, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ forever. So that this day is really not about our righteousness. It's not about showing off on the main street or when we go back to work. This is the day when we're called to remember. Remember that you are dust. To dust you shall return. Except it isn't that easy. God, well, St. Paul writes in the 11th chapter of Romans, for the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. You know, the prodigal son learned that story, went to the far country, shamed his family, spent the fortune, and then came home. He had his speech written, and of course, he expected to be royally argued and dismissed by his father. But the father is rejoicing. And he says, my son who was, al- who was dead is now alive again. It's the same for us, for you and for me. Where have we been? Whatever we've done, whatever we wish we could undo again, and there are lots of things for some of us, I first probably. Where have we been? Whatever we've done, God waits with his grace for the gifts 
and the call of God are irrevocable. The blessed Apostle Paul wrote, What are we then to say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? But he who spared not his only son, but delivered us up for us all, how shall he not freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? For I'm persuaded that neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. In the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, as the children of Israel are coming home from exile, God speaks through the prophet Isaiah, and he says, I have, do not be afraid. I have called you. I have redeemed you. You are mine. Not even Isaiah could have, could have understood how far God is willing to go to bring you and to bring me home. If we missed it, and I doubt we have, John 16, 3, 16, and 17 tell us that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For he sent his son not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God loves us that much. God wants us home that much. And this cross we wear today is reminding us of who we are. When I was a kid, I shared this with the Sunday school class on Sunday, when I was a kid, and I would do something obstreperous, and I was good at that. Um, one of my parents would be yelling at me, Teddy Frank, and I knew when I heard two names I was in trouble. Teddy Frank, have you forgotten who you are? The cross on our foreheads is not about anybody else but God and us. It's not about our righteousness. It is about God's faithfulness. And we have that gift. You have it. I have it. God gave it to us. It only remains for us to claim it, to celebrate it, to rejoice in it. You know, God has always seen the mark of the cross on our it, It's like a spiritual tattoo. We don't always see it. But today, it's there. And it went there in our baptism. And it has to do with this water right here. Oh, and by the way, if when we go out, somebody asks us why that's there, they've asked the question, we have a right to answer it. It's worth a few minutes about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen.